All right, so let's look at what we have here. A zoo sponsored a one-day contest to name a new baby elephant. Doesn't that sound exciting? Zoo visitors deposited entries in a special box between noon, which is t equals zero, and 8 p.m., which t equals eight. At 8 p.m., volunteers began to process the entries. They proceeded, they processed the entries at a rate modeled by this function, hundreds of entries per hour for eight, um, nine, uh, per hour for eight to 12, whatever. According to the model, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? So they process, this is what time they were dropped in, but this is what time they were processed, right? If we want to know at what time were the interest, entries being processed most quickly, then we are looking for the absolute max, right? You find an absolute max of P of T, and we do that with the candidates test, right? We're going to, well, sort of. So remember that um, absolute max can occur at critical points or end points. Okay, at the critical points or at the end points. Our critical points is when P prime of T equals zero. And then we are going to use the calculator for all of this. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Now in the calculator, even though these, this equation has t's in it, it has to have, um, you have to use x. All right, so we're gonna look at the calculator here. We're here, in F1, we're putting the function itself, not the derivative, because sometimes the derivative is really nasty to take. So in F1, we're gonna put x cubed, so x caret top three, uh, minus 30x squared, plus 298x minus 976. Okay, I just got that directly off the paper, right? So hit enter, here's my graph way over there. All right, but remember, do I want the zeros of this function? What am I looking for the zeros of? Uh, yeah, that prime. Okay, so I want to come back over here. I need to fix my window. Would you agree? Yes. What can I fix my window to? Uh, eight. eight to 12. Oh. It tells me. So I hit menu, four for window zoom, my window settings is number one. It literally tells me to go from eight to 12. Okay. All right. So now we need to find the zeros of the derivative. So is everybody here? So we're gonna hit tab, and we wanna find the derivative of F1. Where did we find the derivative button? Next to the nine, next to the book. Find the derivative, and I have to put it's with respect to X, and then I'm not retyping that nightmare in there, right? I, I can hit variable, F1's the only variable I have, put an X in there, hit enter. Now, if you don't want them both on here, we can turn one of them off. Like I can turn F1 off or I can leave it on there. It really doesn't matter at this point. But I want the zeros of F2, right? Is that my, because that's the one I want, right? So I'm gonna hit, are we, are we all here? 
Let me know if you're not. Menu, we want to analyze our graph, and we want to find the zero. Okay? And I click on F2, then here and here. Did, did you have to? I did, and I did. Yeah, I had to click on it to choose it, because that's the one I want the zeros for. So you click on the red one, or whatever color yours is, and then your little line comes up. Okay, yes, so we can go ahead and do that over here. So we're going to do menu, analyze graph, zero, click on the F2 again, click here, click there, and there it is. Now what do we want to do with these? Save them. So I'm going to save this one in A. So I highlight it, variable, store variable A, enter. Double click, variable, store variable, B. I'm not going to go past, I'm just going to get mine in there and then I'll come help you. Mm -hmm. Second corner, what are you doing? Oh, no zooming out. No, no, we never zoom in and out. Um, what A and then B? Four. Windows settings, oh my goodness. Okay, we're going from 8 to 12. No zooming in and out. And I have no idea what the Y's. We'll go from 7 to 7. Negative 7 to 7. Okay, I don't know what happened to your... Oh, you don't have F2 in there. Oh, what the heck is all that? You have E to the third. So then you, but you don't have F2 in there. You need the derivative. The derivative is this. Put an X in there. And F1 of X. <laughs> now you're there. Okay. Okay. I pressed Oh, I need to press store. No, you double click and then you press, no, you double click and then you press variable. Oh, look, and when I, it tells me it's linked to A. Oh, you have to double click it first. So escape. Escape again. Now double click on it. I think it's because you're on the graph. Yeah. Yeah, now double click. There you go. Now variable. And then store variable. There you go. Save it in A and save the other one in B. Are we saved? Okay. So we have two zeros. So we come back over here. Remember we made a little T-chart, X and Y. We had our endpoints. We have 8, and then we have A, and then we have B, and then we have 12. All right, so we want to evaluate each one of these, yes? Okay, so we're going to go back to our calculator, and you're going to go to your calculate screen. And you want to do F1 of 8. Did you get zero? Yes, so that means this is zero. Uh-huh. F1 of A. How many decimal points do you need? Three, not sig figs. You get, it's 5.088 dot dot dot, okay? You can, you don't have to, it doesn't matter either way. It's fine. You need to know how to round. That's why I know I made y'all do that. And but really, it's and in this case, we're not actually giving an actual number number like this anyway. So then we do f1 of b. F1 of b. 
2.911. And then F1 of 12. And we get 8. All right, so the question is, according to the model, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? We were looking for the absolute max of P of T. What's the absolute max value? Eight. The absolute max value is eight. At what time? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, so it says, according to the model, at what time were entries being processed most quickly? So we can say the entries were being processed most quickly at t equals Are we good? Do you see how this is the same candidates test we were doing last week? We we're just having to use the calculator for it. You're going to have to practice on this calculator. Y'all charge up your own calculators and bring them tomorrow so we can get the settings right. Maybe practice tonight on your own calculator. OK, so you don't need your calculator for what we're going to talk about for just a minute. Um, Want to revisit number one? Because yesterday, time was tick tick in a way, so I, was, I wanted to get through the calculator part of this, and I thought, I'm going to come back and add what we have missing, but I think this is going to be a really good opportunity to talk about scoring. Okay, so now I can't tell you exactly how this question will be scored because that isn't decided until after you take it, but there was a question sort of similar to this on last year's exam, and it was worth four points. So let's talk about what you get the points for here and why we, with what we have, would only get three of our points, okay? And I knew I was leaving stuff off, but like I said yesterday, I was wanted to get through the calculator before we ran out of time. We'll come back and add that. All right, so one of the points you get for just that right there, saying that you know that P of T has got to equal zero. I'm sorry, P prime of T. That the derivative has to equal zero. That's one point right there. Your table that we used on the calculator is another point. This is your justification. Even when we put A and B here, that's totally fine. Okay? The third point we would get would be for this, our answer. Okay, because we actually answered the question. What we don't have, and what I felt like we didn't really have time to worry about adding yesterday, and we can go back and add this right now, is the act what these values actually are. So even though the calculator is doing this for us, we're saying that we know we have an absolute max um, can occur at critical points or endpoints, and our critical points happen here, all right? So then we need to also say that this happens when, so this happens at t equals, and then what the calculator gave us for a and b, so I'm just going to give it to you, you don't have to type it back in, um, 9.183, which we let equal was that our A? That was our A, right? Yeah. Which we let equal A and at T equals 10.816, which we let equal B. Okay? So basically you have to put the T values on there and then we called them A and B. And the other thing I realized as I was thinking about this today, I'm just, I'm so used to when I make a t-chart, I put x and y, x and y. We're not even using x and y, right? So what this really should say, let's think about this. This is actually t, right? And this is actually p of t. So my fault big time there. Y'all catch me if I do something stupid like that. So what I added in purple would get us our fourth point. I'm pretty confident that they wouldn't take off for this, but we want to be consistent in what we do. All right, so what questions do you have? All right, so do we remember the process of how to put all this in the calculator? Maybe. Do you remember putting in, we graphed F1? Yes, you set up, so 
We graphed F1. Um, in F1, we graphed whatever the function is that we were given. What did we graph in F2? The derivative. Did we have to find it by hand? No, we let the calculator do it, right? And then we found the zeros of what? F2 of the derivative, right? So you can turn off F1 if you want. You do set your window to whatever this is, right? And so if we look at number two, I want you to work through it, but let's just talk about what's your window going to be on number two? Zero to two, right? And then you're going to graph, the, you're going to put this into F1 to graph it. F2 is going to be your derivative. You find your zeros, write all your stuff down. Does that make sense? I want you to try and go through it, okay? Okay. 